The National Wild Turkey Federation has taken a focused approach to conservation through their America's Big Six of wildlife conservation. Six regions, encompassing 738 million acres, were identified to address the most urgent needs and better focus resources. These regions are America's Western Wildlands, America's Great Open Spaces, America's Crossroads, America's Mid-South Rebirth, America's Southern Piney Woods, and America's Colonial Forests. In these regions, the NWTF and its partners are taking conservation delivery to a whole new level. Rocky coastlines, mountains, lakes, the sheer vastness of the Northwoods. Maine captures a lot of the rugged beauty, the history, and the challenges that have shaped America's colonial forest region. It's a landscape that is deeply influenced by both agriculture and timber production and marked by long, harsh winters that can be difficult for wildlife seeking food and shelter. But despite these challenges, the restoration of the wild turkey in Maine was a tremendous success, and today we enjoy an abundant population that's enjoyed by hunters and wildlife watchers alike. But as turkey numbers have increased, most notably in the southern part of Maine, so too have complaints involved in turkeys. Recent survey data suggests that a significant portion of Maine's residents, nearly 30%, feel that there are too many turkeys where they live. And there's this perception, in some cases a misperception, that turkeys are causing a lot of agricultural damage or competing with other species like deer and grouse for resources. So as you can imagine, there's increasing pressure on the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, or IFW, to increase turkey harvest and expand hunting seasons. But in order to strike the right balance between turkeys and people, we need more data and a better understanding of our turkeys in Maine and hopefully set the table for a future in Maine where we have both healthy turkey populations and a citizenry that embraces turkeys. The restoration of the wild turkey in Maine is an incredible wildlife restoration story. Maine became a state in 1820, which is 200 years ago this year. And that's about the time that we lost wild turkeys in Maine. To right that wrong, our department and the National Wild Turkey Federation and others worked with Vermont Fish and Wildlife to bring 41 turkeys to the state of Maine in 1977. The National Wild Turkey Federation was right there from day one supporting the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife with turkey management and several members of the National Wild Turkey Federation of course had the biological background and the experience trapping and moving turkeys and they provided an incredible amount of technical assistance to us in, in helping us. In this case, the National Wild Turkey Federation partnering on this research project brought clean match to the table so that every dollar that the National brought to the table we could multiply by three. Coupled with that, Dr. Eric Bloomberg landed at the University of Maine with a lot of interest in game birds. We're sitting here with, with some research money in our hand and eight miles down the road is a professor at the University of Maine with an interest in game birds. And you know, he said, let's get together, let's do some research. And we've really wanted to be able to put some science behind the way we manage wild turkeys because we've done it pretty much without the knowledge that you would normally have to, to manage a game species. We started with a focal study area centered around the Bangor Orono area, so more or less the central part of the state, for a variety of reasons, but one of which being that we do have really convenient landscape gradient of forest to agriculture and urban suburban within about a 30 mile radius of where we're sitting here at the UMaine campus. It also puts us in a fairly narrow uh, window of the state with respect to the winters that we see. Maine has a, a big range in uh, climate zones from the coast to the northern forest and we wanted to to the extent possible minimize any confounding effects of, of our study sites being too far spread out and the birds experiencing very different winters. We've been marking turkeys with two different types of transmitters. One is a radio transmitting device that we can use to monitor their survival rate to find nests, things of those nature, and then one of them is a GPS 
tracking device, which is giving us hourly, very precise locations on all those birds that we can use to understand how they're moving across the main landscape. As the project went on, we recognized that there was a really good opportunity to expand some efforts to a more statewide scale in the interest of marking turkeys with leg bands to get hunter returns on those. And from that information, we can estimate what the annual harvest rate is, we can estimate what the annual survival rate is, and with in combination with the, uh, the hunter reporting data for just turkeys in general, we can get estimates of population size. And that's gonna build out the tool that's gonna be useful to the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife for tracking changes in the turkey population through time. Trapping and catching turkeys can be a bit of a roller coaster ride. We work a lot on small private parcels that could be everything from you know, literally the one acre lot that a landowner's house is on and they're letting us trap turkeys just right in their backyard, all the way up to hundreds of thousands of acres on pieces of industrial commercial forest and everywhere in between. A really nice thing about Maine and New England is that despite having that really intensive private land base, um, access is generally pretty open. I'm ecstatic. This is a textbook trapping event. Everything went as perfectly, net deployed. I don't even see any bunching up at all. So yeah, this was perfect. Scott knew what he was doing and we just came and we just collected. <laughs> I don't think I've ever sat such a short amount of time for a shoot before. So yeah, I'm a wildlife biologist with the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, and we had objectives set uh, for this winter to capture 30 male birds and apply aluminum leg bands to uh, weigh each bird, take a series of measurements, and we did that, we reached that, and today we capped that off. And in addition to that goal, we were also working with the University of Maine at Orono to uh, put transmitters and GPS units on on females and since this flock was a female dominated flock it was a good candidate to uh, to capture birds and help reach those objectives. I had nightmares last night of turkeys just walking up to a bait pile and looking at it and walking away. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Seen it happen a few too many times where there's no snow but this site's been ready now for about two weeks. Yeah. I've just been stringing it along. I, I really appreciate it. I mean, this is exactly what I wanted. We've got the birds all boxed up. I'm thinking we should process them over by the trucks on the road so we have some stable footing. We can do that. I have my GPS transmitters with the magnets off, and they're going to take their first point in about 15 minutes, so we should be good to go there. 
How many transmitters do you have? Well, I have uh, 16, but we only got 11 birds, so they're all going to get one. Oh, um, absolutely, yeah. And so as we developed the project and recognized that there were really two angles we wanted to work, both the ecology of the turkeys in the field and this novel disease that was potentially affecting them, we recognized it was a project that could benefit from two graduate students. So enter on the wild turkey side, Matt Gonerman. Matt, uh, you know, has really been tasked with running the logistics and the day-to-day -day of collecting all this data in the field and managing the data that results from it. And he has a passion for catching turkeys and for learning about turkeys that, you know, the project would not be successful without. I'm especially excited because we're putting out some GPS transmitters today that were provided by uh, NWTF. They, uh, they've pretty much gone out of their way to help us uh, by funding the purchase of these transmitters. So what's special about these is that they are programmable and you can set them to take locations of the turkeys throughout the day at any given time period. So we have these transmitters programmed to take hourly locations of the birds from sunup to sundown from November through July. And what that allows us to do is get the entirety of their wintering dispersal into their uh, nesting areas and some of the brood rearing season. So we, we, we're collecting a lot of data just from these transmitters. Super excited to be a part of this project. Couldn't be happening without NWTF, um, Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, and obviously University of Maine where I work. Let's get to work. <laughs> I got into this because I enjoyed the animals and the science and the math of it all, but once you actually start getting out there, it's real easy to kind of fall in love with it. Turkeys seem to be really unique in that they are, they are so generalist. That lends itself to why they are so beloved across the country because so many people have interactions with them. This project specifically and being up here in Maine has taught me that as much as sometimes we like to think that wildlife is separate from our day-to-day -day lives, it's not. And so what it's really taught me is that there is not a huge barrier between our normal lives and the wildlife around us. So I study a specific virus in wild turkeys, it's called lymphoproliferative disease virus, or LPDV, and it actually only just popped up in a wild turkey in 2009, and that was in Arkansas. Prior to that, it was only found in domestic turkeys in Europe and Israel. When I initially started developing this project was, you know, has it been here, just didn't detect it previously? Is it actually a new emerging pathogen within the wild turkey population? And then what is it doing to the turkey population? Initially, I surveyed some hunter harvested uh, wild turkeys and we found a very high prevalence. Um, at that point, it was about 70% prevalence of this pathogen in Maine's wild turkeys. So our question then was, okay, it's here. What is it actually doing? So I guess that's sort of our interest in this project. Is this pathogen affecting the population of wild turkeys? And we're trying to determine if LPDV um, could potentially make a turkey more susceptible to other pathogens, which also is a fitness metric. So essentially we're trying to figure out if LPDV affects the fitness of wild turkeys. So of all those hunter harvested birds that I did um, test, they, they're actually asymptomatic for LPDV. So they carry it, but they're not showing outward signs of it. So in that sense, for hunters, as far as we know, it is perfectly fine to still eat it, and you actually wouldn't even know the turkey has it. And what it can do to turkeys is it can cause skin lesions or internal tumors. So what we're able to do is once we trap these turkeys, we put radio transmitters on them. Something else we're looking at is we're sort of looking across land type and land use gradients. 
So we have study areas that are mainly agricultural, we have rural and we have suburban areas. And so we're trying to determine if this pathogen is more concentrated in certain areas based on land type and then how that may interact with the human conflict. And we're really lucky enough to work with the National Wild Turkey Federation, Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, University of Maine, as well as side by side with several other hunters and landowners who let us use their property to trap these turkeys. I think that it says a lot for how much we can learn from a species, from dedication, from individual humans that are part of an organization that truly cares about conservation of these species. I think this project is fantastic. I think it's, it's a mix of using you know, some of the, the newest technology, uh, the, you know, the latest modeling techniques. You know, it, it's a research project that has a very strong management implications, right? It's answering really tough questions that are gonna help us manage the population better. So instead of asking, are there too many turkeys in Maine? Biologists and decision makers are asking, where should we increase harvest? And where can we create additional hunting opportunities? And they'll have confidence in their ability to address those questions while conserving the overall population. And so for, for us, as a conservation organization centered around you know, turkey conservation and hunting, the turkey research that is going on in Maine uh, with the University of Maine and Maine Inland Fisheries and Wildlife is a perfect example of the kind of research we want to fund. You know, saying that we have within the NWTF that, that you know, we've done more for other wildlife by accident than we have for the wild turkey on purpose. And you know, it's kind of a, a thing we say jokingly, but it's also really true. 